Hello. Welcome. This video is episode two in my Camino de Santiago experience, the Camino del Norte, and it's about the Sangha. <coughs> that is the community, the group. So just a disclaimer before I start. I heard about this pilgrimage from a woman whom I only saw once during a Buddhist retreat in upstate New York in the summer of 2018, so a couple of years ago. And she was a keynote speaker at this retreat for educators. And so I got an email <clears throat> inviting me on this pilgrimage. Now, my idea was at the moment that I received the email, how wonderful to engage in this pilgrimage, a Catholic pilgrimage in northern Spain, but with a group of uh, mindful walking practitioners. So that was a key motivator for me when I signed up for the pilgrimage. And I had this idea that everyone in the group would be familiar with mindful walking. Because, I mean, how about that for an opportunity to practice, right? So the Sangha is one of the three jewels of Buddhism. The first jewel is the Buddha. And I'm, I have no doubt that I'll be recording videos on and about the Buddha. Um, so I'll come back to that, no doubt, at some stage. The second jewel is the Dharma. The Dharma means the teachings. So that's the second jewel. And the third jewel is the Sangha. The Sangha is the community. So when you have Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, then you're pretty much set on your spiritual path. And your, the Sangha doesn't necessarily need to be, uh, you know, formal, although the word does refer traditionally to a community of Buddhist meditation practitioners. So the people that you practice meditation with, those people are part of the Sangha. But now it's more loosely applied to just the people that you engage with on a day-to-day -day basis. So in the case of the Camino de Santiago pilgrimage, the group was my Sangha. And the function of the Sangha is to it's, it's a single body, it's a single organism, and within that body and organism, the different elements interact with one another and support each other to the best of their ability. <clears throat> so I'd like to dedicate this video to the people in the group, in the Sangha, who supported me in some way. The first time we were photographed together was in the lobby of the hotel in Madrid. And so here we are. The ladies in yellow are the guides, the Spanish guides. We're all very excited, as you can see at the beginning. The first thing to say about the Sangha is that I would not have undertaken this pilgrimage had it not been for Valerie Brown and her invitation to join her on this pilgrimage. Even though I, I misunderstood, it ended up being what it was, right? And uh, that's the first thing to say, that I would not have done it other than in the context of a group. And this group, even though it wasn't practicing mindful walking uh, throughout, it was sufficiently supportive for me to be able to practice on my own, which I did a lot of. There was a lot of soul-searching for me, 
during uh, the pilgrimage and I'm sure it's the same for others. So back to the Sangha. We have um, Mary. Now Mary is one of the twins. We were having dinner one night and here we are that, that evening. As I got chatting to Mary and I told her about my foot condition that I was worried about because my heel was hurting a lot and I just wasn't sure that I'd be able to walk such long hours on a heel that was painful. And so she turned around, you know, quite casually and said, Oh, well, you know, I happen to have this uh, boot that I brought just in case, you know, just in case, because I brought two. So I need one, but I brought two just in case. And then it forces your foot upwards and then you kind of strap it on so that, you know, you're, somehow your foot rests. At, at night and I was listening to her and I was thinking you know as she was saying this that the that the foot gets kind of locked into place already I'm feeling you know relief like oh my god yeah I think that that's exactly what I need it's exactly what I need so she goes okay so I'll just go and get it I'm like no no I mean don't worry let's have dinner and you know and you can get it later she goes no I'll, I'll just go hang on it'll take me two minutes she goes gets it, brings it back, gives it to me, and oh my god, this thing saved the day for me. I mean, who would have thought, right? I went to the podiatrist before going to Spain, and the podiatrist said, no, well, I mean, you know. Anyway, so Mary gives me the boot and five little pills. She goes, these are just some painkillers. Take them if you need them. And I was like, oh, oh God, thank you. So that was Mary. Thank you so much for that. Next we have um, Karen. Now, Karen at the beginning was quite straightforward in saying, look, you guys, you know, you you gather together and you you have your little fun and whatever just don't don't count i'm it's that's just not it's not me okay so i'm gonna mind my own business and my little corner here i'm very happy to be here don't get me wrong i was like oh nice um so i think on that basis and just i don't know we we kind of clicked um karen and i big buddies so buddies it, it was suggested that at the beginning that you find a buddy, not some, not the people that you're that you're with. If you came with someone, which wasn't my case, and then every time we got on the bus, just make sure that your buddy's there, that everything's, you know. So just that little connection. Hey, where's my buddy? Oh, there she is. Okay, cool. Hey, gotcha. You know that was that was nice. And then we got to to chatting. Uh, some time or other, I shared a lot with Karen about what had what had brought me to the pilgrimage, and I, I wouldn't have shared that kind of story with anybody. It just it just happened to be with Karen because of of the things she said to me. She is a financial advisor. So this question of finances has been playing a lot in my mind for the last year or so or longer because to, we need to find financial stability in our lives and so that is what I'm working towards and Karen was very helpful. She's a wonderful listener. So thank you, Karen, for your help and support with just being there. Also, um, Mark, Mark and Karen happened to be together when, when I had just had this, this experience which forms part of my Camino story. So I walked into this coffee shop 
And I saw them sitting there and, you know, I just walked straight over, sat down. And I, I, th I interrupted them. <laughs> I don't know if they were having an, an important conversation or not, but I sat there and I said, hey, do you want to hear what just happened to me? And they were like, yeah. And so I sat there and I babbled for about, I don't know how long, like five or ten minutes. I told them this whole spiel. And then they go, oh, wow. <laughs> now you're going to be thinking, gee, what happened? No, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it was just weird. It was just nice, which is so nice that in the Camino de Santiago, something nice happened to me even though lots of not nice things happened. You know. <laughs> so Mark also helped me uh, just check you know go through my my notes because what happened that day was something that i i wanted to remember and it's also something that even though i i spoke about it straight away with karen and with mark i knew that i wouldn't be speaking about it again i wouldn't be speaking about it much because i wanted to keep it you know i wanted to to keep it as pure as i could so that when it comes to my filming of the Santiago story, which is the video after this one, I'd be able to, to stick to the facts as much as, as much as possible without, you know, over, over elaborating. <clears throat> Others in the group that I would like to mention quickly, you guys were, were so kind and chatty and approachable and helpful and supportive other people i want to mention are shirley shirley oh my god what's amazing about shirley is that the first time i saw her was uh the night before we started we went out for dinner and shirley sat on the opposite end of a very big table and i looked at her and i thought gosh is this lady going to be able to walk you, you don't come across as, you know, the, the, the warrior that you are. You come across as quite, you know, quite introverted, quite very quiet, very mild in, in, in manner and in speech, very gentle. And then as the pilgrimage progressed, oh my God, Shirley was like ninja. She was... The first one in the front, you know, she kept that rhythm going. I was behind her at some stage one day going, oh my gosh, I, how is it possible that Shirley is walking so steadily and so, you know, with such determination? And here I am, you know, kind of <laughs> behind her with, with, a, with a gap widening in the, I mean, it was incredible. Much admiration for Shirley. Uh, Anne, thank you, Anne, for your conversation, especially that evening that we sat together and we spoke for ages. And then we met up at Lisbon with your lovely husband, Richard. Thank you for dinner. It was so nice meeting you and speaking. Um, Anne is the only other person in the group. She forms part of the Blue Cliff Sangha. So Blue Cliff is the monastery in upstate New York where I went to this retreat that I was speaking about at the beginning. So Anne, thank you so much and hope to see you around. I, I'm, I'm sure I will when I go to Blue Cliff next. I hope we can hook up again. Erin. Erin, you are awesome. I am so happy to have met such a kind and dedicated teacher as you. You remind me of some of the teachers I had when I was a teenager, especially 
literature teachers. Literature is so important and I'm so happy to have studied English literature at university even though it didn't look like I ever would in high school. But uh, my literature teachers at high school were amazing also. And you remind me, you have that quality of, of care and understanding of these teenagers and she was keeping all the teenagers updated on, on Twitter. I hope, I hope you're okay. I hope your staff is okay. I think it's great that you should have a teacher's staff. It, it suits you and um, it was awesome speaking with you. Thanks also for spending some time with me. Last but not least is my absolute hero, Elle. Elle! Now this lady, okay. Oh man, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> Good. It's a little video. So it's our, our, our second day oh, in, in cold. Cold, rainy. Ooh. By the time we reached Santiago de Compostela, Elle was so ill. Now my foot was nothing. Because I, I, Mary was kind enough to, to help me sort that out at the beginning. So I had no issues again with my, with my foot. My health was fine. Everything was fine. But L was kind of deteriorating a little bit. There was a lot of pressure. There was a lot of energy going into this, going into this walk. So Elle came to the pilgrimage, not because she wanted to do it, this is amazing, but because Sue, her sister, had been through some tough times recently. And so in order to support her sister, Elle came on this trip. You are so enthusiastic and such a, such a rock. I I have great admiration for you, Elle, and I am so happy to have met you and Sue and Marianne. And thank you, Elle, for your strength, your determination, and your example. I think I'm going to leave it there. I am so happy to have traveled the Camino del Norte with this lovely group of ladies and Mark. Now, what about you? Have you traveled the Camino del Norte? Have you done the Camino de Santiago? Did you do it solo? Did you do it with a group? Please do drop me a line and let me know what your experience of the Camino de Santiago is. So what route did you take and how did you do it? Did you go the Camino del Norte? Did you go the French way? Did you do the Portuguese way? please share. I really, really would love to hear from you. And I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for your company. Bye!